ill-fated lovers, or a straight-up red flag parade. Everyone's got their own opinion about Charles and Diana's marriage, but one thing is no doubt true. It was doomed from the very beginning. If the rumours are to be believed, Prince Charles and Princess Diana's marriage may not have started on the most romantic foot. Initially, the royal family's strict standards and expectations likely prevented Charles from being able to marry Camilla Parker Bowles, despite his feelings for her. With this in mind, it's perhaps no surprise that Charles and Diana's marriage was not exactly rooted in true love. In fact, royal expert Elizabeth Holmes recently told Us Weekly that the relationship was almost like a business transaction. She explained, Diana just checked so many boxes and sort of slotted right in, and was clearly very eager and willing and wanting to please. This might explain why Diana and Charles married so soon after they began dating. Of their courtship, Holmes said, it was so brief. That sort of speaks to how Charles was approaching this and the pressures that he was feeling. It was sort of like a formality, almost. What's more, in the documentary Diana, the truth behind the interview, former newspaper editor Sir Max Hastings claimed the princess wasn't so fond of her husband. He said, yes, she did hate Charles. And when I said, were there ever happy times? She said, no, the marriage was hell from day one. By all accounts, Princess Diana and Prince Charles were hardly wild about each other when they first got together. You might even wonder why they ever pursued a romantic relationship, let alone a marriage. Turns out, their families played a significant role in their courtship. Filmmaker Jemima Khan, who was once friends with Diana, spoke to Sky News about the late royal's relationship with Charles. She claimed, Their marriage was essentially arranged. I know it can often seem like a really alien concept, but it wasn't so long ago that it was kind of the norm even in the UK. Khan also spoke about Charles and Diana's marriage during an appearance on Lorraine. When asked if the former couple was in fact arranged, she did not mince words. As close as arranged as you can get in that it was an appropriate match chosen by the parents mm. and a sort of committee of family members. If the royal's marriage really was arranged, it's perhaps no surprise that they ultimately went their separate ways. And while Princess Diana reportedly hated Charles, the feeling was apparently mutual. Diana's astrologer, Penny Thornton, spoke about an eye-opening conversation she had with the princess in the documentary Revenge of a Princess. She said, One of the most shocking things that Diana told me was that the night before the wedding, Charles told her that he didn't love her. I think Charles didn't want to go into the wedding on a false premise. He wanted to square it with her, and it was devastating for Diana. Thornton went on to suggest that Diana and Charles's wedding almost didn't happen. So, why didn't they call it off then and there? Supposedly, it wasn't their call to make. Royal biographer Ingrid Seward told Us Weekly, Charles told some of his friends that he felt pressurized into marrying Diana because Philip said, you've either got to marry her or let her go. She's only 19, you can't string her along. Princess Diana and Prince Charles's 12-year age gap likely made their relationship all the more difficult. Diana was only a teenager when she first met Charles, who was in his late 20s at the time. Charles recalled his first impression of his bride-to-be during their infamous engagement interview. I remember thinking what a very jolly and amusing and, and attractive 16-year-old she was. While Charles and Diana may have not started dating until Diana was 19, author Tina Brown claims they actually met many years before. Brown said the pair apparently first crossed paths when a five-year-old Diana was playing with a young Prince Andrew. The couple's families had actually been intertwined for years before they began dating. In fact, Charles had a short-lived relationship with Diana's sister, Sarah Spencer. Although he and the late princess did not begin dating until years after he and her sister split, in tapes recorded for the journalist Andrew Morton, Diana recalled the moment they reconnected. She said, We were talking about Mountbatten and his girlfriend, and I said, You must be so lonely and he was all over me for the rest of the evening, following me around like a puppy. Charles and Diana's red flags became quite apparent even shortly after their engagement. In fact, almost as soon as they got engaged, the couple met with the BBC at Buckingham Palace for an interview. When the interviewer asked if the pair were in love, this happened. Of course. <laughs> Whatever in love means. <laughs> As you might imagine, Diana wasn't happy with her then fiancé's response. However, the princess kept her cool in the interview, and we didn't learn about her true impression until years later. 
In Andrew Morton's tapes, Diana says, This ridiculous reporter said, Are you in love? So I said, Yes, of course we are. And Charles turned round and said, Whatever love means, it traumatised me. Diana wasn't alone in her reaction to Charles's shocking statement. Even today, YouTube commenters on the BBC's interview make a point of expressing their disappointment. As one user says, Even if he didn't love her, he didn't have to be so cruel to her. She seemed like such a kind soul. Famously, Prince Charles nursed feelings for Camilla Parker Bowles throughout his and Princess Diana's marriage. He even admitted to having an affair with Camilla during an interview with reporter Jonathan Dimbleby. When asked if he had been faithful to Diana, Charles responded, Yes. Until it became irretrievably broken down. Many had already gathered their own conclusions on the future king's infidelity at that point, but it was still shocking to hear him outright admit it. Diana was also unfaithful while married to Charles. She and army captain James Hewitt had a years-long affair, for example. Hewitt later penned a memoir about his secret romance with the princess, meaning many of the details of the affair are now public. The book reportedly brought Hewitt millions, but it also harmed his reputation. A number of critics took issue with his willingness to profit off of the scandal. That doesn't stop the retired army officer from speaking about Diana in interviews, though. Hewitt even spoke to Entertainment Tonight in 2011 about how the late princess might have reacted to Prince William and Princess Catherine's wedding. He speculated that she would have been very proud and supportive. He also took some time to discuss Princess Diana's infidelity, saying, if Charles hadn't cheated, Diana wouldn't have. Good evening. Charles has made it clear he wants out, but so far, no word from the other half. Prior to their split, there was so much tension in Charles and Diana's relationship that Queen Elizabeth had to get involved. The late monarch reportedly penned a letter asking Diana to move forward with a divorce. She wrote, I have consulted with the Archbishop of Canterbury and with the Prime Minister and, of course, with Charles, and we have decided that the best course for you is divorce. Diana reportedly wasn't happy about the Queen's letter. According to the Mirror, she told her butler, That's rich. They get to decide whether I divorce. Diana and Charles finalised their divorce in 1996. It seems that everyone was on board with the split, including the Queen herself. However, Diana's feelings about the divorce were a little more complicated. According to Sally Bedell Smith's book, Diana in Search of Herself, the princess said, The pressure was for us to sort ourselves out in some way. We could see what the public were requiring. They wanted clarity of a situation that was obviously becoming intolerable. With their large age gap and contrasting personalities, it's clear that Charles and Diana really didn't have a lot in common. No surprise, then, that Charles was said to have taken issue with Diana's style choices. The princess was known for her eye-catching looks, many of which are still revisited decades later. Who could forget the iconic revenge dress the People's Princess wore for a gala at the Serpentine Gallery on the very night Charles admitted to having an affair with Camilla? As People's Deputy Style Director Brittany Tallarico later told the magazine, she didn't have to say anything with words. It was a fashion response. That dress became her clear message to Charles and the world. Diana's bold statement becomes even more fascinating when you consider the fact that many believe Charles didn't care for her passion for fashion. In a separate interview with People, Elizabeth Holmes said, For Charles, you can tell in his public remarks, fashion is one of the things he sought to use against her. He used Diana's interest in fashion and the interest in her fashion to paint her as shallow or frivolous. Princess Diana was open about her struggle with bulimia, offering a degree of transparency that was unheard of for a royal at the time. Diana shared the details of her experience with the eating disorder during her bombshell BBC interview with Martin Bashir in 1995. And that's like a secret disease you inflicted upon yourself because your self-esteem was to low ebb and you don't think you're worthy or valuable. It seems that Diana sadly couldn't turn to Charles for support. According to the late princess, he made insensitive comments about her body. She told Andrew Morton, The bulimia started the week after we got engaged. My husband put his hand on my waistline and said, Ooh, a bit chubby here, aren't we? And that triggered off something in me. And the Camilla thing, I was desperate, desperate. 
Diana went on to share that her wedding dress fitting revealed the extent of her eating disorder. She said, I had shrunk into nothing from February to July. If you need help with an eating disorder, or know someone who is, help is available. Visit the National Eating Disorders Association website, or contact NIDA's live helpline at 1-800-931-2237. You can also receive 24-7 crisis support via text. Send NIDA to 741-741.